Hey folks, I actually think I'm gonna do two videos tonight. I'll post one tomorrow and one on, uh, sorry about that, and one on Tuesday. This one will be about me and where I grew up and why I'm the black sheep of the family. Sorry, I keep having a message pop up and I, it's annoying. Anyway, um, I was born in McDowell County, West Virginia. It's the southernmost county in West Virginia and also probably one of the poorest, if not the poorest. When I was two, almost in January of 1972, I turned three in April of 1972. My dad was caught in a mine explosion. He was a little guy, he was five foot six, and back then probably barely weighed 130 pounds. And he was so little, so they, the miner, if anybody knows anything about underground mines, there's a thing called, a machine called a miner, which actually goes in there and cuts the coal out. And it had gotten off in a hole and it was stuck. So my dad went around behind the miner. So he was between the miner and the wall of the mines and some ding dong decided it was a good time to smoke a cigarette, lit a match and it just blew up. So dad laid there stuck behind the miner for, I, I, I don't really remember all of the details. I just remember he lay there listening to his friends and coworkers in pain and suffering until they got out. I don't think anybody died in that mine explosion. I don't remember anybody ever saying anybody died. Um, I know that it, um, it broke his spirit. My dad was never very mentally stable, I guess is the way you say it. And um, he was never able to work after that. He couldn't, he could not go back in the mines because he would shake and tremble. He just couldn't. And that was the only thing he was capable of doing because my dad couldn't read or write. Back when he was growing up, it was not uncommon for people to not learn to read or write in West Virginia. And I imagine a lot of other places too. So, we will move on past that. Um, my mom was never very affectionate. And dad always wanted to be overly affectionate. As in, he loved his kids and he wanted them around to the day he died. And everybody knows when you turn 18, you have to fly. But anyway, I remember a time when I was like three or four, somewhere around there. My mom hit me with a uh, hairbrush. For the life of me, I don't remember why, but like I said, I was only three or four. And I remember standing in the hallway crying, saying nobody loved me. What are you doing? Chester's over here bothering the cat. Leave the cat alone. I'm sorry. Um, and she said, that's not true. <laughs> Sorry, Boo wants to say hi. Say hi, Boo Boo. I do apologize for the interruption. <laughs> Here's Chester, he's come to, he's jealous. So he has to come get some loving too, don't you? Yes, you do. Okay. So anyway, and there's her butt that I'm sure you don't wanna see. And his tail. I do apologize. If nothing else, it's comic relief. Um, I remember when my dad was caught in the mine explosion, my sister was four, and like I said, I was two. Um, and I remember the day mom told us that dad was hurt and he wouldn't be home for a while, but that he was coming home. I was two years old, so what does a two-year-old do? I go off and play. What is my sister at four years old? What does she do? Why can't you be more grown up about it? This is very serious. I looked at her and I said, I'm two years old. What do you think I'm going to do? And went off about my happy little self way. It's not that I didn't love my dad. I was two years old. What kind of reaction should you get out of a two year old? 
but I remember the day he came home. I was at my na uh, my neighbor's house, Miss Repass. I can't remember her first name. Her last name was Repass. And when they got close, and I don't know how she knew they were close, uh, she took me out on the porch, and it was, mind you, West Virginia. It was straight uphill to her house. And uh, they pulled in, Mom and uh, a friend of theirs named Bill, Bill, I don't remember, I don't, Jones, Bill Jones, that's his name. Anyway, they pulled in, Mom and Bill got out of the front, and then the back door opened, and my daddy got out, and boy, let me tell you, that woman couldn't hold me back, not that she tried. I took off running, got halfway down the hill, and rolled the rest of the way down the hill. I jumped up. I didn't care that I had just rolled down the hill. I didn't want to cry. All I wanted to do was hug my daddy. I was so happy to see him. So, you know, life goes on. Dad went through this really weird depression that he stayed in for many years. He uh, He got his doctor to write him prescriptions that would make him sleep because all he ever wanted to do was sleep. Um, I understand why mom left dad. I don't approve of the way she did it, but I understand why she did it. Dad would never go any place with us. Y'all don't want me to go. We did want him to go, and then it got to the point where we didn't want him to go. We, we didn't want him around, but that's because he never wanted to go, and we got used to life without him. And then in the wintertime, we had coal heat. So that means that somebody has to go downstairs and put coal in the furnace. And um, it was, this, I'm pretty sure this happened right before mom left dad. So it was cold outside. It was really cold. And dad was laid there wrapped up in a blanket. I mean, he was wrapped up like a mummy. All you could see was his face. And mom said, Lonnie, go fix up the fire. He turned right around, never budged, turned around and told my brother to go do it. And we had all three just gotten out of the bathtub and were clean and ready to go to school the next day. And mom was mad. She jumped up. He's clean. He just got out of the bathtub. Leave. You go do it. You're too damn lazy. to. And I don't blame her. I don't blame her a bit. Dad was always not wanting to move and telling my brother to go do it or just not do it. Um, finally, mom left dad. I was seventh grade. I think I was 12 in seventh grade, I think. And uh, I was actually happy. And I made the decision to go with mom because I didn't want to stay up in that holler. We did. We lived in a holler way up in the tip of the holler. We were the last house up in there. It was solitude galore. It was just, I was, de it, if I'd have stayed there, I would have been a wild child. I just would have been because dad would not have controlled me and I would have fought against him tooth and nail. And um, being with mom wasn't such a great idea either. So I don't think I had, neither choice was a good choice. Things happened on both sides that just made it a very bad choice. And um, mom left dad, not because she wasn't happy, but because she met another man and wanted to marry him. Mind you, I understand the reason she started seeing this other man is dad never made her happy. He would never do anything with her. He just was a lump. He would sleep and do nothing. And you, in order for any marriage to work, you have to work at it. And he just, he just always, he never worked at it. After they, sorry. That's a hound dog. Um, after they divorced, I asked Dad, I said, why did you sleep all the time? Why didn't you make any effort to, to 
to be part of our lives. And he said, because she was cheating on me. I said, how do you know she was? I just know it. In other words, he was paranoid because she wasn't. She was not cheating on him until I was about 10 years old when she went to work for Hill's department store. And over the course of those two years, she started dating who would soon become my stepdad. And we are not talking about him. So I went with mom and things got really bad there. So I ran away and I ended up back with my dad. Then I ended up at my grandparents. Then I ended up, I don't remember. I know I bounced around from mom to dad to dad to grandma Duval, from grandma Duval back to dad. I don't, and other people in between. I finally turned 18 and I went to Job Corps. And when I was there, I met my first ex-husband should have never have married him. It was just me being young, stupid, and wanting to be in love. He never loved me, and I don't think I ever loved him. But I wanted it, and he went along with it. And he was abusive. He he hit me about three times, and that was it, buddy. He should have. It should have only been once. But I was young and stupid. I took it three times. That was it. But when we finally did split up, uh, we were living in Nashville because one of his, but my best friend from Job Corps and his bad best friend from Job Corps got married and they were living in Nashville and he was going to the Nashville Auto Diesel College. So we moved down there and it ended up they moved back to West Virginia. Me and him split up, and that was it. I was done with him for good. Um, while I was down there, I went to work for the state of Tennessee. But I was also working part-time. Oh, no, let me back that up. I went to work on a riverboat, and that was my full-time job. I worked in tickets and reservations. It was a small organization, so, you know, it was easy. It, it, was, it was a fun, exciting job. And one day, here comes this little dude bebopping across the deck. Um, shoot. Gangplank. He was bebopping across the gangplank, had his little round glasses, just as adorable as... He, he actually made me drop the phone. And he had seen me that same day, but I didn't know he had seen me, and he had the same reaction. And it took a little while... And we finally started dating. And within no time, we were living together. And in about four or five weeks after we started living together, we got married. We were married for 15 years. It was a long time. But I went to college, and that changed everything. It shouldn't have, but it did. Um, he got to where he would ride his motorcycle and be gone all day long. And I would call him and say, hey, would you bring me some some dinner? Just And I would tell him where I wanted him to stop and bring me some dinner. And then it would be three hours later, I'd finally get in touch with him again. And I would ask him, why didn't you bring me my food? His response was, I didn't know you wanted it right then. He would never ride me on his motorcycle. He said, you're too heavy. I was, okay, by the way, I had gastric bypass in 2004, and I've lost a lot of weight. But, it, you know, he, he literally told me I was too heavy for him to ride. Never even tried. He just said I was too heavy. I bought my, I got my own license, motorcycle license. I got my own motorcycle, and I had back surgery back in 2000. Oh, no, I found out that it was actually, stop. It was in 1998. Hang on. 